Welcome to Happy Talks with Dr. Alice and Donovan. Dr. Alice Fong is a holistic naturopathic doctor and founder of Amour de Soi Wellness. And Donovan Jensen is a software engineer and founder of HowToHappy.com. Together, they're out to cause more happiness in the world. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our holiday edition of Happy Talks. My name is Dr. Alice. This is my awesome co-host, Donovan. And today we're going to be talking about how to deal with the holidays, the stress, the family, how to stay happy in the midst of all of that. So Donovan, to kick things off, what are your initial thoughts on, you know, how to stay happy and positive and stress-free around the holidays? Well, I think actually to switch it up for the holidays, I'm going to ask you, since you're, since one of the main things is stress, right? And that's right. one of your expertise points. I'm going to ask you to start this time. Okay, and- sure. Yeah. You know, I think sometimes depending on a person's situation and their circumstances, you know, being, spending time with family can be either stressful or not stressful or not being able to spend time with your family can be stressful or not stressful. It really depends. Everyone's situation is unique. So I'll just start with one scenario and then maybe we'll navigate through some other scenarios. (laughs) Like For me, generally, the holidays aren't too stressful. And I think that was a team effort in my family to make it as stress-free as possible. Uh, Actually, a a while back, we we kind of decided to basically not do gifts anymore. And that's really relieved stress for our family specifically, because most of us feel like we don't really need more stuff. So I'm thankful that my family is not too caught up in the materialistic of stuff things. Uh, We mainly just get gifts for the kids. And, And so we really focus on making it more meaningful of just having quality time, connecting, enjoying a meal together, and yeah, celebrating with silly things. All my sister does actually like a Christmas Eve party where she, she might do like, we stopped doing gifts for a period of time, but then she started doing this Christmas Eve party where we'd get together and do like a white elephant exchange. So instead of trying to get a gift for everyone, which is stressful because it's like, especially if you haven't seen that person in a while, you don't even know what they want, what they need. Why get them like a useless thing that they might just want to exchange Um, you could just get like a funny, a funny, silly gift or whatever, throw it in the white elephant pot of gifts and, and make it a a game out of it. So it's more enjoyable that way. And, you know, I don't have to feel stressed about having everyone get me a gift that I don't really want or need or have space for. So it just is relieving to just have like, okay, one gift that I may or may not use. Maybe I'll re-gift it, give it to someone else, or maybe I will use it. One time I got a, an inflatable Christmas pig that I thought I would never ever use, but the, my niece and nephew get a kick out of it. So it does get used (laughs) sometimes. So that's, that's where I start with trying to See how you can create the event as more meaningful and really focus on what matters. Not to say like you're bad and wrong if you want to give everyone gifts, but like kind of maybe assess how everyone else feels about the principle. And if everyone's on board, then do that. I guess, I guess the the challenge is when, when there's mixed opinions about it. So I'd be curious on, on what your tick of that is or what you do in your family as far as dealing with holiday stress. Well, that's exactly my, my family is mixed opinions. Um, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I'm more on sort of the wavelength that you described where Mm -hmm. I don't really want to do any of the gifts. I just want to spend the time sort of being together and hanging out and spending quality time. And the rest of the family is not super on board with that, Mm -hmm. but I think to take a step back and think about things to make, you know, the holidays move a little smoother are, sort of what you mentioned at the beginning, which is kind of getting everyone on board as much as possible. 
mm-hmm. and communicating around like expectations. And, and I think one of the really important things that you can do as an individual is sort of identify the traps that you tend to fall into around the holidays that can cause stress and burnout and all these other like feelings of uh, anxiety. Um, mm-hmm. Because I know for me, gifts, for example, is one of the places, and I'm sure it is for a lot of people, but that I can get sort of stuck in these loops of like, oh, it needs to be perfect. And I need to do this. And I need to do all this. And I need to do that. When in reality, one, sure, maybe there is some structure in my family around giving gifts, but no one, everyone in my family is an adult. So no one's going to be like, oh, well, you got me this thing and I have to exchange it. And now I don't respect you or so, you know what I mean? Like it's not that serious or important. And while, um, most people want to try to get something for the other person. And like you said, I think it's sort of unnecessary overhead uh, because there are many exchanges and whatnot that are made. Um, Trying to sort of take out some of the seriousness from giving gifts and and sort of exchanging with with each other can help a lot. Uh, Another piece that I wanted to talk about is like sort of with seeing family. A lot of people I know have family tension of some sort or tensions are likely to rise. Um, Mm -hmm. It again, in my mind, goes back to sort of this looking at kind of the patterns or traps you've fallen into in the past and preparing yourself around those and trying to sort of form mitigations that if like, oh, if the conversation starts going this way, I need to just take off for five minutes or, or drive around the block or whatever else. Um, I haven't experienced that for a long time, but there were times in the past where my family had enough tension in it that some things like that did need to be in place. Um, but yeah, so going back to the, the presence piece, I think, um, like you said, really communicating with your family as a whole and finding something that works for everyone is, uh, helpful. One of the things that we've done since there are mixed opinions is instead of everyone has to buy something for everyone, or that's sort of the implied expectation, there's uh, a name drawing system. Well, yeah. So you just have a particular person that you buy for. Although my family also does a second name for making something, which I absolutely hate. It's my least <laughs> favorite thing. Um, but that's that's sort of something that's a, a middle ground for us. It, it, if some people were left to their defaults, like me, there would be none of that. There would be zero. And other people like my stepmom, there would be just millions of gifts everywhere. So um, that, that sort of a balance helps us a little bit uh, on both ends. Yeah, that makes sense. That that seems like a good balance. And I would want to, um, yeah, I wanted to elaborate on something that you touched on of just like conflicts going going beyond just gifts, but knowing like, you know, maybe you have a certain type of conflict with a certain family member and it's a reoccurring theme and how do you address and approach that? And it just reminds me of, I actually, for Thanksgiving, I, I flew out to Boston with my husband um, and to, to see all his family interactions and <laughs> the positive, the negative, the drama, the, the joy, all of, all of it was, was interesting to, to watch as kind of like, a, you know, I didn't grow up with these people. So I was just new and fresh <laughs> to do this, this experience. And I could see how like some people might have gotten triggered because they were saying things from the past. And um, just kind of an example of uh, my own husband interacting with his father in that what happened was, you know, my husband did something that his dad did not agree with, (laughs) was very unhappy and just was like name calling and being not so nice. And so, so basically that triggered um, my husband, TJ, to be like, you know, if this is how you're going to be, I don't want to be here. I just might like leave. (laughs) This was kind of a thing. And I think what kind of brought it together, I was sort of like the, the, the mediator and being like, you know, let's, uh, and I think everyone was on board finding some sort of mutual purpose or goal. Um, being like, you know, how do we really want to spend our holidays? Do we really want to be upset and angry and just kind of like calling it out? We only have a limited amount of time together. How do we want to spend it? And it's like, what can we do to get to like having a more peaceful, harmonious type of event? And, you know, that means both parties putting aside their differences 
for like the shared goal and interest of getting along for the holidays. But it, it does take, you know, both both people to kind of give up something like their resentments or their anchors or their their past baggage from whatever like that person did from forever ago to, to let it go and focus on like, hey, let's just enjoy the present moment. And I think that's that's really key whether it's the holidays or not, being able to, if both people are in agreement, let's like work together to try to get past this thing that's creating a wedge between us or, you know, temporarily put it on the side. <laughs> like, yeah, maybe we do need to deal with that, whatever that might be, put it to the side just for the day or just for the few hours that we're spending together. So we can really, you know, maximize the, the limited time that we do have together. Yeah, I think those are a couple of really good ideas. And um, what you mentioned around sort of, you know, especially if you can do it early, getting mm-hmm. clear on sort of the outcomes for the day or hours or however, whatever the time period is. And like you mentioned, saying something like, hey, I know you disagree with this. I don't really want to bring it up during, you know, Christmas Day or whatever else. We can talk about it, but maybe let's defer it. Some strategies like that, I think. Mm-hmm especially, you know, if you, you talk about it beforehand and you have both parties on board and you, you briefly mentioned this by having other people there as mediators, right? Cause I know sometimes it's like, Hey, we're not going to talk about this. And then you see them in person and it's like, I really need to prove that I'm right for some reason. And right. things start slipping out and it goes off track. So especially also having sort of that social uh, extra barrier or guidance to say like, Hey, I feel like this conversation is kind of getting off track. Um, I feel like those strategies could really be effective. Um, Mm -hmm. I haven't used them particularly for holiday stuff, but I've seen them effective in other realms where it's like, uh, you know, like divorced parents or something who have a shared child activity. And it's like, maybe there's a bunch of other things that they want to discuss or fight about, but burying that under the surface. uh, So you can kind of share this in this experience together. Um, and another thing I think that is important that you mentioned is sort of this idea of how do you really want to spend kind of this special time together, right? Do you right. really want to spend Christmas Day or whatever holiday mm-hmm. arguing and fighting and and probably moving further and further apart? Or do you want to actually have what is likely, I mean, it depends on the situation for everyone, but mm-hmm. uh, likely a limited sort of gathering, right? Most families, I would guess, aren't able to get together all the time. Um, right. So it's it's sort of a rare occasion and one worth sort of paying attention to how you can make it fruitful for everyone involved. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really good point of pointing out that it is a rare occasion. And that's something actually my, my husband did to, to, kind of remember, even though he was kind of getting reactive over like things that his father was bringing up to just kind of remember that like, okay, his father's in his seventies, you know, maybe he has like 10, maybe 15 or so more Christmases left or, or Thanksgiving. This was for Thanksgiving, but regardless, there's only like so many holidays left. It's like, you know, or, you know, who knows, it could be the last, we don't really know how much time any of us have left. And so just remembering that like, oh, well, we only have maybe X amount of Christmases left or X amount of Thanksgivings left. Uh, Like, how do I really want those to go? (laughs) It gives you kind of like a frame of, oh, we don't have endless amount of times to hold on to this grudge that we might be holding on to. And, you know, for my, my partner who has to fly to the East coast to, you know, spend time with his family. So there's, there's really more limited time. Cause it's not like, Oh, I can like my family is just, you know, down five minute drive away so I can see them. So maybe I take that for granted, but you know, it, it has you appreciate the limited time and really want to maximize the time that you, you do get with them when you put it in that like time reference of like, well, how many, how many more X holidays do I have left with these people <laughs> kind of a thing? Yeah. And while you're talking, I thought of another angle, um, Mm -hmm. sort of similar, which is, you know, if you're having conflict with someone at a family gathering, 
-hmm. it's not just that person that you're impacting, right? You're kind of ruining the experience for everyone. Like it's a very selfish thing to allow yourself to be sucked into a big blow up fight because it's not just, you know, like if I'm fighting with my dad, it's not just my dad and I who are going to have a bad time. It is everyone who is at the house and it's everyone's sort of like limited time, special event time mm-hmm. to get together. So I, I don't know how much weight that carries for, for people in general, but I, I know for me, um, again, in other contexts, not particularly this, but other times I've thought about like, wow, I'm so frustrated with this person, but also this is a, a group context and right. I don't think this is the right time to try to hash this out and right. stress everyone else out and ruin right. their time. And, and I mean, it's, it's kind of like what you said, where you had to step in or, you know, stepped in as sort of a mediator to try to like, Hey, like maybe we could sort of make this work, but you know, in the ideal situation for your, your holiday, mm-hmm. that's not what would be happening, right? <laughs> you, you're able to sort of enjoy your time and, and relax and, and have a good time. So that's another piece of it is just realizing that it doesn't just impact whoever you're having conflict with. It mm-hmm. impacts everyone who's there or around. Right. Absolutely. It does. Yeah, that's really important to consider the group, whether you're on the outside or on the inside of just like, what can I do? So I, w- I wasn't even thinking of like the impact on me. I was just thinking of like, these guys are fighting over something silly. <laughs> Let's get over this so we can move on <laughs> kind of a thing. And um, I would want to like, I, would, I do want to address like the, the flip side for those people who, who might not be able to have the opportunity to go home for the Mm -hmm. holidays because of COVID or restrictions or whatever the reason might be. Um, Like, you know, if, if you're having to spend your holiday by yourself or, or not in the way that you typically like to spend your holidays, like, do you have any thoughts on how to brighten your holiday if you don't get to do what you typically like or want to do? Yeah, I will do my best because I'm not the most celebratory person. So the handful of holidays that I have missed, I've just been like, "Eh, okay. Um, But one of the things uh, that I think is important is if you do have, and this may not be the case for everyone, but if you do have some sort of like family or friends or someone that you can check in with for some period of the day, whether that's, you know, just a call or a video call or whatever else. Um, I think that's important to get some sense, you know, like if you're, if you're missing home, um, to get some sense of like connection, even if it's not the face-to-face ideal stuff that you want. Um, I know some people are not in that position for whatever reason. Um, one of the things that I've done in the past when I'm not able to see loved ones on a holiday is just find something else, whether or not it's themed to that holiday, that is sort of a, a treat or something that's nice for myself to um still sort of have you know a a mini holiday even though it's not this big grander or social celebration um those are the the couple things off the top of my head i'd be curious what you have on your end yeah yeah for for me what i think of because i have had to spend some holidays on my own and sometimes it's you know planning a, a friend's giving or planning event. If, if there's other stragglers that are on their own, like let's, let's get together if we can, or there have been occasions where I have had to work or do other things. Or I actually, what I thought of was when I was living on the East coast and all my family was in California, you know, I, I couldn't fly out for every holiday, obviously. And I wanted my family to come visit me too at some point. And we, as a group decided to, you know, cause it would be just so expensive for my whole family to fly out for Thanksgiving. (laughs) The flights are so expensive. And for us, it wasn't like, it didn't have to be the exact day Mm -hmm. of Thanksgiving that we celebrate. So if we can't all to get, cause like some people have just two families, you can't see both families on on both days, or some people have three families or more families. So it's just like, it's limited time. If, if there's a group that isn't so attached to the actual day, maybe you can do it the week before. That's what we did. 
it was like half the flights were half the cost. It was way more, more easier. And we still enjoyed a nice meal together. And that's really what, what mattered to us was like, okay, so if we don't get to celebrate on the exact day, you know, maybe we can find a way to, you know, still celebrate on a different day as an idea. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. You know, there's no reason really that you need to constrain sort of this up, right? The, the point is not, hey, on the this day, I'm going yeah. to do something. Like the point for most people is to sort of get together, have some sort of a celebration, see your family, have some quality time with loved ones and not forcing yourself to be on the exact day. Sometimes that's when it lines up because a lot of people have it off, but sometimes it doesn't. And sometimes it's much easier if you just wait a day or a week or whatever else. And like you said, you can still have the same experience. It's not almost the same experience. It is the same experience, you know, (laughs) unless you have someone that's bummed out because it's not the exact day, but there's really no hard rule as to why that should be the case. Mm -hmm. Another thing that I kind of wanted to uh, wade into and get some of your thoughts around are um, as a way to feel more gratitude and and connected during the holidays, um, acts of service or like donations or, or charity or that kind of works. So I'd be curious what some of your initial thoughts are in that realm. Yeah. You know, that's generally, it doesn't even have to be related to the holidays for me, something that I just know for myself when I'm feeling down or low or depressed. Um, and I, I tend to like be in my own hole of my own misery of, in my own head. And that, that really gets me down. And I, I've learned, I've come to learn and discover for myself what helps me get out of it faster, not to say, you know, it's, it's okay to be in those down moments and it happens to everyone and to give myself the space to do that. But I know the, the thing that helps me move through the emotions quicker is actually being out there with people, being of service, um, you know, that helped me through uh, a difficult breakup and tell me through a lot of various situations um, to just focus on, on making a difference for another human being helps me feel better. Even though I was like, I don't want to, I'm going to be a drag because I'm in a bad mood. I'm just going to be like a party pooper <laughs> type of thing. But in reality, it actually helps get me out of my, my bad mood faster. So I've learned to kind of just get over myself and put that like fear of, you know, bringing other people down to the side and just focus on, you know, just doing my best. And if I really feel like I, I can't, then giving myself the, the space to curl up in bed if I, I need to. But I know generally if I'm talking to other people, if I'm being to, of service with other people, it helps kind of get me out of my own head and more present with, with what's going on in, in life and with other people. Yeah. That mirrors a lot of sort of the feelings and experiences I have around it, which Mm -hmm. is to say that many of the traps that I get stuck in, like worrying too much about what presents I'm going to get people or getting frustrated that I have to make something for someone (laughs) or, um, you know, getting worried about potential conflicts that are going to arise in family gatherings. When I go and contribute either time or money to other people and sort of think about one, the impact, right? It just feels nice. It feels a lot nicer to help someone who's truly in need, you know, somebody who needs socks or something, as opposed to getting my sister an Apple watch or something, right? It feels much better. And the other pieces, it really helps put things in perspective and ground me around, okay, yeah, I'm really stressed out about what president I'm going to get for my mom, but why? Does that really matter that much? There's there's other people who are not able to find a warm place to sleep. Mm-hmm. And, you know, spending some time working on something or money on something that truly makes a difference in people's lives has mm-hmm. allowed me in the past, especially around the holidays, to really zone in on what's actually important mm-hmm. and to be able to tune more into sort of the spirit of some of the gatherings and stuff like like you were mentioning with the white elephant gift type of thing, you know, something that's going to be fun and light and enjoyable instead of, Oh, how do I make sure that I get this perfect item for this person that they're going to love that they're not going to want to take back. Um, 
you know, when, when in the grand scheme of things, those are not very important at all. Mm -hmm. And then just the, the last piece is, you know, obviously doing that work helps me recognize sort of the, the position that I'm in and just how grateful I am to have some of the things, um, that a lot of people don't and have the ability to, um, you know, doing something like buying gifts or allowing a family to buy gifts for their kids when it would otherwise be a struggle is just a really, um, grounding sort of experience. Absolutely. Yeah. It really puts things into perspective and helps you appreciate what you have, um, compared to so many others who, who don't it's, it's, makes a difference. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I feel like we covered this topic pretty well. I don't know. Do you have any other thoughts to share about dealing with holiday stress or how to make it happier and more enjoyable? Yeah. Let me think if there's any other traps that I <laughs> typically fall into. Mm. There is, there is one, one more that I, that I just thought of, which is, um, you know, a lot of people tend to have time off and, I have not too often, but there's been a couple of times where I've not really disconnected from some of my projects and some of my mm -hmm. stuff that I was working on and would go, you know, sort of sneak away to keep pushing, pushing on stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially with how many people are burned out and how the last couple of years have gone and whatnot. Um, I would just say that, you know, if you have time off to really think about what it is that you're spending the time off on. Um, mm -hmm. I also know there have been times in the past where I sort of, you know, I had the time off, but I didn't use it particularly well. Like I didn't do stuff that was enjoyable and refreshing. I just kind of did, did, uh, you know, like the low grade lounge mm -hmm. around stuff. And for some people that's, that's exactly what they need, right. It's to just like hang out, lay around, eat some, eat some cookies, watch, catch up on shows. Like that's, that's what feels good to them. Totally, right. totally fine. Um, I just know that sometimes I have spent my time in ways um, where I wasn't necessarily refreshed coming back. And um, the other thing is it's also a really good time to sort of take some space and reflect on just things, um, you know, it goes, it goes around or in the same track of setting sort of intentions towards how you want to spend your family time, but also just setting intentions around how you want to spend your time in general it can be a really nice time to do that. So um, mm -hmm. that's just one last piece I wanted to throw in there. Yeah, no, that's a really good point because it is time off and, and yeah, maybe you don't want to spend all, all that time with your family, especially if your family stresses you out that, that maybe you do need some time to decompress and, and reflect and think about what it is that you're needing to recuperate from, you know, the busy, stressful year. And, and things like that. I think that's that's really important and valuable. And I think what I've learned over the years, and sometimes I still am guilty of this, of like, I thought I might, you know, do a, a little bit of work here and there when I was traveling for my holiday trip. And I really, it just doesn't happen. So it's just like to make zero expectations that any work will happen. Or I've also created the intention of like, oh yeah, I'll try to get in a few workouts while I'm traveling on holiday. And that rarely ever happens. So I just think I need to just give up that idea and just enjoy the time and not feel, oh, this is another thing I wanted to touch on, should not feel guilty. I think that's a common thing of like, oh, I'm really getting off my, my health routine, my exercise routine, my nutrition routine, totally out the window when I'm traveling. But to not be so hard on myself to be like, well, I got back right in. I, I got right back into my routine once I got back from my trip. And so, so what if I, I really went off the rail, but it's just uh, to know that like, Hey, I give yourself a little bit of slack um, around the holidays and it's okay. You can get back on track on the routine. You don't have to like cave and give in to delicious treats because everyone's pressuring you to. Um, that's really on you to decide, but, you know, but ultimately if you reflect and think like, you know, I, I work really hard. I, I, you know, I want to enjoy food and people and celebrate and not feel guilty for, for doing so. 
<laughs> that was my last point that I wanted to add. Yeah, no, I think that's really useful. And I, for me, what's nice or helpful is really getting clear and making that decision beforehand. Yeah. Either saying like, no, I have this fitness goal, this health goal, whatever else, and I'm going to stick to it because I don't want to go back a week or whatever else. Or right. the opposite and saying like, listen, yeah. hey, I'm mostly on top of my stuff. The other 51 weeks, I'm going to take one. <laughs> yeah. And just kind of, you know, maybe I gain a few pounds, but then uh, I know exactly what day sort of this ends or that I'm, that I'm not just kind of like going wild or whatever it is that you're doing and just knowing when you're going to sort of transition back, but making that decision very clearly beforehand, at least for me helps so much. Totally. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, everyone, I hope you have an amazing holiday. Thank you for tuning in to Happy Talks Holiday Edition. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoy this video, be sure to like it and then go and subscribe to my channel and ring the bell so you get notified when the next video comes out. If you check out in the description below, go to my website where you can get my free fast and easy guide to stress relief. Thanks again for checking us out and we'll see you next time.